In this video, we're looking at the automotive generator and regulator. We'll have an overview of the generator and a fairly detailed description of how the regulator functions. This is a cutaway view of the generator. and We're going to go through the components, at least the major components, one by one. This is the armature. It spins around the middle and it contains the windings in which the voltage and the resultant current is generated. This, of course, is the drive pulley, which is driven by the engine via a drive belt. As we already know, to generate that voltage, we need a magnetic field. Well, the field coils are responsible for developing the magnetic field. There's a coil on either side of the armature, and we end up with a north pole and a south pole facing each other. The brushes contact the commutator, and they're responsible to carry the charge current away from the armature to the outside world. They're usually made out of a carbon material, so they're fairly soft and they conduct electricity well. The commutator is made of segments connected to each of the windings in the armature. It spins with the armature and it's responsible for maintaining a constant DC output. In the external circuitry to the generator, the D plus connection is connected to the field connection. Now it's very important to realize that our generator relies on residual magnetism which is left in the field coils. This residual magnetism is very, very weak. So as it starts to spin, we start to get a very small amount of voltage coming out of the armature. Even though that residual magnetism is extremely weak, it still produces a small amount of output from the armature. And this is connected directly back into the field circuit to very quickly strengthen that magnetic field. As it begins to spin, the voltage very quickly builds up to our normal charging voltage. We'll now start to have a look at the generator regulator. It's a very old electromechanical device. It looks quite complicated, but hopefully by the time we've gone through this, you'll see that the function is fairly straightforward and we'll go through a very gradual step-by-step -step process to see how it works. We've got three major components in this regulator. First of all, you can see there is the, the highlighted voltage regulator. Some of the regulators only have two cores, but they still work on the the same principle. In the centre we have the current regulator and again we'll go through the actions of this very shortly. And thirdly is the reverse current relay. This is responsible for connecting the generator to the battery to allow it to charge and also to disconnect it so that the battery will not discharge through the generator when the engine stopped. We'll start by having a look at how the D and F terminals are connected together. The D plus from the generator goes to the D of the regulator. You can see that it goes through a couple of sets of contacts and then straight out to the F terminal and back to the field circuit of the generator. As our D plus voltage starts to build up, this is applied to the reverse current relay. You can see that's highlighted in yellow and our voltage is applied to this relay from the D plus terminal. When the voltage reaches the correct level, our reverse current relay contacts close and you can see the current path going from the D terminal through the current regulator, through the contacts and then to the battery. So this is where our battery begins to charge. Next, we're looking at the voltage regulator. The regulator contacts are highlighted, and you can see that there is a voltage winding around the core of the regulator. When the regulator voltage builds up to 13.8 to 14.2 volts, you can see that the regulator contacts open. And if you remember from the previous slide, 
these contacts carry our field circuit. So the very moment the field circuit is broken, our voltage starts to drop and our contacts close. These regulator contacts continue vibrating open and closed anything up to about a couple of thousand times per second to maintain a constant voltage. Now we're looking at the current regulation. You can see the current path shown by the red arrows. It goes through the actual coil of the current regulator. It then travels through the reverse current relay contacts and then down to our battery. You can see here that as the current increases, the magnetic field strength on the current regulator contacts begins to get greater. So the moment that the current reaches a predetermined point, the current regulator contacts open and that reduces the output of the generator. Remember that the generator can produce more than it's capable of producing safely. So a 25 amp generator might be able to produce 30 or 40 amps, but it won't do it for very long. So the current regulator is crucial to prevent the generator from overheating and burning out. As our generator starts to slow down at idle or when the engines turn off, what happens is the battery voltage becomes higher than the generator and so the current starts to reverse. It goes backwards from the battery to the generator. What you can see here is the current flowing through the reverse current relay is opposite to the charge current. This then cancels out the magnetic field and the reverse current relay opens again. I think this should give you a fairly detailed understanding of the generator and the regulator, why we need them and how they work. Thanks for watching.